Algebra 1, Lesson 92. Are you ready to go on a journey with me? We are going to start a type of problem that I like to call dirt problems. The reason I call them dirt problems is they're all based on this basic equation, which is D equals RT. I suppose I could call them dart problems, but somehow I started calling them dirt problems and that has just stuck. What this means is that distance is always equal to rate times time. Okay? We're going to work on a series of these problems. There will be four of them by the time you get to Algebra 2. We'll do three of them this year, then review them next year and add a fourth one. They always work on this basic principle that distance equals rate times time. So this is what you want to burn into your brain. And that's why I call them dirt problems, okay? John calls them something else that's useful but more of a tongue twister and frankly just makes me nervous. He calls them uniform motion problems. Now, this is a very helpful phrase as well because in all of these problems people are going to be traveling, right? distance, rate, time, that probably cues you in. There's, there's going to be train trips and there's going to be people on pogo sticks and there's going to be helicopter rides. Lord, there's going to be a rare, rare rabbit running through the brambles. I'm just going to tell you right now. And so whenever we take a trip, you and I know that in real life, you don't go the same speed the whole time, right? Sometimes you speed up and sometimes you slow down. And if you're pogo sticking, you might have to stop for a popsicle break if you get too hot. You don't travel the same speed the whole time. But in these problems, we're going to make that assumption. We're going to assume that your motion is the same. Uniform means same, right? So we're assuming very unrealistically in these problems that we are always traveling at the same rate and that makes them much easier. When we start to talk about acceleration and deceleration, that moves us into the land of differential equations and calculus and physics and we are not ready to go there yet. So we're making our problems a little bit simpler. So whenever you see this phrase uniform motion, just know that that means they're easier than they could be. All right? So, there are, three, there are three different categories this year that we're going to learn. And the first one is what we're learning in 92. And that is a scenario that I call to Mortar and Beck. You've seen Lord of the Rings. You know what Sam and Frodo have to do. They have to crawl their way to... Mount Doom and they have to drop the ring into the fiery pits where it will be melted down and then they have to go all the way back to the shop. They're not going to make it and they think it's a one-way trip but it's not true. They actually together um that's not the way I wanted to draw the picture. Wait this is the picture I wanted to draw. They go all the way to Mortar, and then they go all the way back to the Shire, right? That is the trip they took. So, if we simplify this to take out any shortcuts or alternative routes, the distance that they travel to Mordor is the same as the distance that they travel back. The first distance is equal to the same distance. And so we can say, as a very simple starting equation, that the first distance is equal to the second distance. This is a picture of it. This is the same idea written in equation form. Now, we also told ourselves up here that distance equals rate times time. So we can change this to say the first rate times the first time is equal to the second rate times the second time. I bet on that original trip, they traveled slower The rate was slower. I don't know what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. Don't listen to that. This is what we need to know. This is our base equation for doing these problems. All right? 
you are thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I've seen something like this before. Yes, you have. Uh, since lesson 79, we've been doing problems that, that play with these variables because we've been preparing for lesson 92. So, hallelujah, all your hard work is going to pay off. It's going to make sense in a minute, all right? Now, the variation on this is that what, this is one way to envision Sam and Frodo's trip to Mordor and back. They went there and then they came back. But you can also imagine that as Frodo was traveling, Sam was traveling too. And that's another variation of problem in this first type to Mordor and back. Um, Frodo's distance, we can say the distance of Frodo equals the distance of Sam, because they went together. So we can do the very same thing. We can say the distance of Frodo equals the distance of Sam, and then we can say the rate of Frodo, right? So this is where the dirt business comes in. Remember I'm using this? Right, so there's another way that we can envision this first type of problem. So we're going to do a couple problems today. One, two, three. And they will take one or the other of these pictures, but in all of the cases, the two distances will be the same. So let's dive in to the first problem. On Tuesday, the express train made the trip in 12 hours. On Wednesday, the freight train made the same trip in 16 hours. Okay, I'm going to stop there and wrap my head around what's happening. We have a certain trip. One day, the express train took it. The other day, the freight train took it. Okay, so this is the distance of, let's see, it's express first. And this is the distance of the freight train. Okay, I'm stopping right here and getting my wits around me uh, because as we add more styles of problems, it's going to be more confusing. I need to get the picture straight in my head. Once I get the picture straight, it helps me start the equations. Oh, I know that this must be true because the picture shows me that those are the same. And then using my dirt idea, I can change this since D equals RT. I can say the rate of the express times the time of the express equals the rate of the freight times the time of the freight. Make sense? Now we've got our base equation. Yay! Once we get the base equation, uh, I think we've done this before, but if not, we'll do it now. We can make a list of the variables over here, and then when we go back and read the problem and start getting that information, we can fill it in right away. So now I'm going to go back and continue reading the problem. I'll start at the beginning. On Tuesday, the express train made the trip in 12 hours. Express train time, 12 hours. On Wednesday, the freight train made the same trip in 16 hours. Time of the freight train, 16. Find the rate of each train. If the rate of the freight train was 15 kilometers less, than the rate of the express train. Okay, now I can I can use the rates. I can start with either one, but for me, I'm saying the freight train is slower. So the freight train is less than the rate of the express train. That makes sense, because express trains are usually fast. And the difference is 15 kilometers. So what I'm gonna wanna do is subtract 15 from the express side to give me the freight train. Does that make sense? We've done that kind of adjustment before. Okay, so I don't have this. I, I'm going to need to find this one, and I'm going to need to find this one as an actual number. That's what I need for my answers. But I can start plugging in here, and you already know how to do this. Put some buckets down. Start filling in. This one we don't know, so I'll just leave it as it is. There's a number. Aha, this one's got an expression, minus 15, that got a little close, and then this is 16. 
okay? From here on out, you guys, this is familiar to you. Once we get the information filled in, you've been doing this all before. So that is familiar. John was a good buddy to you by helping you practice. I have to distribute here. 16R times E. And let's see. times 15 is what I'm thinking about. 30. So it's 240. Okay. Minus 240. There's the minus sign. And here it is over here. Okay. Good. Keep this off to the side. Now I'm going to, oh boy, this is going to end up in negative land, but it's okay. Minus 16. RE to swim those fishies that way and I get minus 4 RE equals minus 240. Divide both sides by minus 4 and I get that the rate of the express train equals that would be oh minus 4. It would be 60, right? Okay. And so then the rate of the freight train is 60 minus 15 or 45 and I believe this is miles per hour kilometers per hour Make sense? Kind of, kind of. All right. You're familiar with the algebra part, but let's try setting up another one. This is one of my, I don't know if it's a favorite problem, but it's one of my most memorable problems in the entire Saxon compendium. All right, the members of the girls' club hike to Lake Tenkiller at two miles per hour. Okay, we're going to ignore the numbers for now. We're just trying to figure out the picture. Mr. Ali gave them a ride back home at 13 miles per hour. Okay, so this is where it starts to get disturbing. These girls hiked to Lake Tenkiller. I mean, Tenkiller? What kind of a name is that? I don't even know. Then, this strange Mr. Ali gave them a ride home. Mr. Ali, why is he giving these girls a ride back home? Is it in a tractor? Is it in a covered wagon? Is it in a Jeep? I don't know. This creates a lot of questions for me, and I hope you're not burdened by the same as I am. But I've been pondering this question for 20 years now, and I still don't have any answers, you guys. I'm not completely convinced these girls are safe, although apparently they get home, so I guess that's good. But this is what I think about when I do this problem. All right, so this is the distance to the lake, and this is the distance from the lake. You can make up your own letters. If you want to just make it one and two, that's fine. But just do whatever works for you to make the variables match to the story because that will help your brain connect the words to numbers. That's why we do it that way. The distance to Lake Ten Killer is the same as the distance from Lake Ten Killer, and since distance equals rate times time, we can say the rate of T times the time of T equals the rate of F times the time of F. Okay, there's our base equation. We're starting to get onto solid ground again. We write our variables over here so we can read the story again and fill them in as we go. And also, I think it's very helpful when you're starting a problem and you're not 100% sure what to do. It's nice to be able to just kind of follow a flow and fill things in without really having to think about it. So I, I would say I encourage you, but you guys, do it. Just do it the way I do it. Trust me. Like I said, I've been, doing, I've been teaching algebra for 20 years, plus however many years I spent studying it. Um, 
So trust me, there's a flow to this that is going to work and make it easier for you. Just do it like I do it. Don't argue with me. Okay. Ready? Let's go back and find some numbers so we can fill in. The members of the girls club hike to Lake Tenkiller at two miles per hour. Ah, that's their rate. Mr. Ali gave them a ride back home at 12 miles per hour. See, 12 miles per hour, that's not very fast. It just concerns me about their safety. Find their hiking time, so that's two. They hike two there. If it was five hours long, the time there is less than the time that they came back by five. So if we subtract five, that'll make it work out. Okay. Again, you can you can write the equation based on either one of these, whichever one makes more sense to you. We write the inequality first, and then we use the number to adjust. Okay. Once we get that set, and we want to know how far is it. to like 10 killer. Does that mean 10 people were killed there? I don't know. Does that mean, I don't, I don't even know. Um, so how many people's bodies were dumped in the lake? And this isn't really a puffy cloud of knowledge. I just want to highlight it. Um, I just get murder scenarios right and left when I do this problem. So pardon my trauma. Okay, let's plug these variables into this setup. Great. Right? Okay. We distribute 2TF minus 10 equals 12TF. Oh, wait. No, that's right. I'm teaching, Jane. I am. Let me finish this. I've got one more problem left, I think. This is wrong. The I set this up wrong. I'm just looking at this and realizing this. I set this up wrong. This it was originally the, the time to the lake was longer because they hiked instead of drove. So this one was longer, so we need to add the five to the shorter time. I set that up wrong. My bad. Be smarter than me. So this is plus. Okay, it's tricky, I'm not joking. So now to solve, we're gonna swim the TFs that away. 10 equals 10 TFs. So, what that means is that the time that it took them to return from Lake 10 Killer was one hour. Well, I gave them a ride, but I still want to know who he is and what he was doing at Lake Ten Killer and why he gave these girls a ride. Did he know them? Had he met them before? Was he their camp counselor? Was this some sort of a camp activity? I don't know. There's no answers for me, you guys. I'm traumatized. Okay, the time that it took them to go to Lake Ten Killer would then be six, right? We add five. Now, did we answer the original question though? How far is it to Lake Ten Killer? Well, I look at my variables and I go, far? That's not a rate. That's not how fast. It's not a time, how long. How far distance? We don't usually get asked the distance as part of our answer. We usually get asked the rate or the time. But the distance to go all the way back here is the rate times the time. Hmm. Well, do they mean the rate times the time to the tent lake or the rate times the time coming back from the lake? Guess what? It doesn't make any difference. You can do it either way. If we want to measure going to the lake, then we would take the rate of two and multiply it by the time, six, that tells us that it's 10 miles to the lake. 
if we want to measure it with our data coming from the lake, the rate they traveled is 12, and the time is 1. So that is also 12 miles. So how far is it to lake 10 killers? The answer is 12 miles. Yay. That's a tricky one, and it's a good reminder to always check back at the problem to make sure you're answering the question that it's actually asking. And when they say how far, that's a distance, and we have to calculate it using rate 10 time. Are you confused yet? No? Okay, let me try with one more problem. Example 92.3. So first we're going to read it, we're going to ignore the numbers and just listen to the story and figure out what's going on. Durant drove to the Oasis in two hours and Madil walked to the Oasis in ten hours. Okay, I'm assuming they came from the same place. There's no part of the story that really tells me that, but they're both going to the Oasis. There they go. And we've got Durant and Madil. Their distances are the same. Um, one drove and one walked. Okay, so Durant's probably a faster rate, but that's what's going on there. I like to think Durant took a dune buggy, because that would be amazing to drive through the desert in a dune buggy. Um, and Madil walked. I don't think anyone was on a camel, so that's too bad. All right, so now before we get the numbers out, let's get our thoughts organized. I know that that's true because it's Sam and Frodo both going to Mordor. We know that distance equals rate times time, so I can change this. Right? That's our base equation. We're going to plug some little dudes into that. Set this up. Okay, so from getting this picture straight in my head, I'm able to do all of this organizing. Now I'm ready to go back to the problem and find the numbers and fill them in. Durant drove to the Oasis in two miles. Time of Durant, two. Madil walked to the Oasis in 10 hours. I feel sorry for him. Probably has sand in his teeth. How far is it to the Oasis? Aha! That's another distance. Okay, the question is asking us how far. If Durant drove 16 miles per hour faster than the deal walked. Okay, so Durant, the rate of Durant is greater than the rate of Madil, and to make them even, you'd have to add 16 to the poor little walker's rate. This time I'm sure I got the sign right. This time for sure. Okay, now we've got all of our information gathered. Equals. And now let's fill in. Right? Distribute. That's a 16. It's kind of hard to tell. So 2rm plus 32 equals 10. Rm will subtract two of these. 32 equals 8. John usually makes the numbers come out very cute in these. Divide by 8. The rate of my deal was 4. Now, we haven't calculated the rate of, what's the other guy's name? Durant. But we don't really need it. We need the distance. And we know that we can calculate the distance using either guy's information because they both have the same distance. So, we found the rate of my deal. So, we can just take his data. The rate of my deal times the time of my deal equals 4 times 10, which equals 40. So the distance to the oasis is 40 miles. I'm looking at the problem. Yeah, it's miles. Yay. That's a long way to walk. I'm telling you, he was thirsty by the time he got there. He had sand in his teeth. He was probably sunburned, unless he had access to some sunscreen. 
Um, but I'll tell you what, I bet his feet were ready for a little cool water. Um, all right, and just for fun, I know. Um, let's calculate the distance using Durant's data. We don't know his rate yet, but we know that if we take Mahil's rate of four, then we know that the rate of Durant is 20. And so then if we do the rate of Durant times the time of Durant, that equals 20 times two, and there's the 40 again. So it checks out. Okay, that's it. Mortar style to there and back problems, lesson 92. We're done. Thank you. Bye.